not so much about the quantity. And uh, that's the thing that we're going to be running with today. Um, quality traveling on a budget without hurting yourself or your wallet was a part of me that wishes I never went. Um, but the whole thing was to be more grateful for where I'm at here. Came back with an illness. Working on getting over that illness. That's one of the reasons I'm walking around in the sunlight today instead of being online. Better oxygen. I was in the sauna for the second time this week. I bought a three-day pass for $18, which is a rip-off, but my lungs need to be uh, cleaned out. Yeah, I did a fair amount of walking in Las Vegas and San Diego, but as far as uh, appreciation of nature, this is where it's at here in Colorado, and there's really no one else here that I can see. There is a car parked back there by the gate where I parked, but they can be anywhere. Uh, more than likely, they're uh, doing a day hike. They're probably not doing survival camping. Uh, could be security too, who knows. Although I would think that they would be parked up here. Um, guess the point is, in this lovely park here, I have it all to myself. Of course, there's not a lot of people living near the park, or directly, or that close. If they are, they probably have it in excess of 40 acres, maybe even 1,000 acres. They have literally their own park. I was actually recording a video here once, and I noticed behind me somebody darted out behind the trees. They were listening to my video cast. I was talking about Facebook and relationships, and I'll just echo what I mentioned there. It's funny how I'm thinking about it twice in a row, but yeah, you know, I brought back my Facebook page because they need some help with some car stuff. Now I'm thinking about deactivating it. I'm also distracted by certain emails. There's a number of different emails I don't talk about that come in that, again, uh, I'm not giving it airtime. But there are certain things that are acceptable. There are certain things that are not acceptable. This is, this is, this is winter. This is basically, you know, I'm enjoying the last few moments of fall. There's a reason why animals hibernate. There's a reason why this time last year, I tried to take a month off of YouTube, but I think it ended up only being like a few weeks. So there's a reason, especially for those of us that are living off the grid, without any grid electricity, you know, we wind down. People like me, we do a little bit less. You know what I mean? We, uh, but I'm not necessarily moving slower, although I'm getting older. Lately, I've been getting up early again, three o'clock, four o'clock, and I also want to do more things in Colorado. There's actually a book that I picked up very good book. Had a little bit about the uh, Native American history, spirituality, synchronicity. He writes a little about the San Luis Valley, Mysterious Valley. It's basically a hiker that traveled to southwest Colorado and other areas, San Luis Valley. So you have these mountains and you have these valleys. And you have more mountains and valleys. Breaking point. By me just expressing my opinions and my ideas, it offends those closest to me. I speak about tribalism. I speak about what I've been through. And uh, people walk on my emotions and act like uh, certain things aren't a reality when they are. So I get to A, go through the reality, and B, be persecuted by the audience or others if I share my truth. So you get what you get now on YouTube. And there's a part of me that wants to express itself for who I am without holding back outside of YouTube. That's not really an outlet that I have right now. It's an outlet that I think I've been seeking. Real friendship, people that I can really talk to and open up and get into personal stuff without putting it on YouTube and encouraging people to exploit me, frankly. Um, it's very difficult when your audience is just an audience. And it's just like there's that digital barrier uh, it hurts, but during the winter months, it hurts more. That's why the trolls come out more, um, unless you're aware of it and you're on guard. But it's not just trolls, it's traps. It's people playing mind games. There's less energy there's from the sun each day. So people that have tendencies to want to pull energy from others, they're really active in December. It's interesting how you have the holidays and we have a lot of really intense emotions. And I've seen some really 
crazy behavior from people around New Year's Eve, Christmas, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve. Uh, I've noticed others on YouTube recommend that their audiences, especially if they're on the spiritual path, to really recenter on that spiritual path and what that means during these uh, times that we're in. Because we really need to connect with that light within. And that's what I need to do. And I noticed there's just a huge shift after we get through January and after we get through February. There's just more light and energy and people moving around and they get about road trips and vacations. And heck, I like to do that too. I like a new trip, a new vacation after a couple months. So yeah, I put in a few applications for work in town, but my, my life's starting to feel kind of crazy now. <laughs> it's like, whoa, even if I just want to go wash dishes because it's the slow season, I uh, may not luck out. I also applied at a hotel. So, you know, I'm thinking about moving things forward with the videos as I get some more rest. And again, you'll notice I'm not diverting into reactionary politics, one side or the other. I'm actually abstaining from getting into, I don't know if you've picked up on that or not, right? I don't need to. I'm proud of the statements that I've already made and the videos that I've already made. I'm not doing this to be profitable. I'm singing what my heart needs to sing at the moment in which I say it. I don't need to keep saying the same thing about Trump or Alex Jones, the left-right paradigm, the new world order, the plans for World War III, the effects of the solar flares on human consciousness, why I see off-grid living as a healthier way of life as opposed to living in the grid. You know, I can go on and on and just repeat myself but I do appreciate, at least in myself, that I'm consistent with the things that I talk about. And I don't just start randomly pulling in stuff that I don't really believe or can verify. Things like Planet X, I stay away from. Things like Nibiru, I don't think that we're alone in the universe, but I stay away from certain really popular narratives that other so-called ufologists and conspiracy theorists go for. And I just think that there are far more legitimate things to be looking at, to be interested in. As I take a deep breath here. So this is the first time that I've been back here at this particular park in probably, you know, I don't know, I six months, six months. And I've only walked up so far, so we have this thing held up a little bit here. But this is really good for my lungs because there was the contaminants that I was exposed to on Greyhound. Then of course, there was whatever I was breathing in Las Vegas. Then there was being behind probably sick guy on the drive over, even though I got that ride from San Diego. And that was very much meant to happen. You get that ride from San Diego, literally to Las Vegas for $20. And it almost seems as if the crater paired up Ethan and myself to watch each other's back to get out of San Diego. We had a lot in common. That is, I guess, what made that possible because we established trust in each other and basically watched each other's back until Las Vegas. He went with dude. And I can tell that Ethan, at 22 years old, 23 years old, he was still in the searching, traveling, partying maybe, but also willing to work. Smart guy, but very open, open to new experiences, far more open than I. I'm not so open that I'm gonna go to somebody's Airbnb that I pick up a ride from on Craigslist when there's already drama in the house, as that person was describing. He was describing drama in the house with a girl. That's the kind of stuff that repels me. Don't wanna have anything to do with household drama. So even though I was in a crappy situation in Las Vegas, now you know why. I'm like, I'll take my chances with the street and waiting five hours. So without a doubt, I am seeing my theories validated over and over again about the harmful influences of unnatural electromagnetic pollution. We're talking cell phone towers, we're talking radio towers, the whole nine yards. When you go from an environment of basically being away from that and all being natural, all natural. That's a big shock. 
that's a really big shock. Only in heaven knows why a person like me would actually fall down to smoke cigarettes during such a shock to the system. Somehow, on a subconscious level, there's a reason why sensitive people will smoke, and they'll smoke when they go into those environments, or travel on the airplane, or travel on Greyhound, to shut down some of their senses. It may not seem common sense for someone to be shutting down their senses, but that's exactly what's happening. Um, and so, the harmful effects of those cigarettes, or anything for that matter, a lot of things have a harmful effect. They can hurt that sensitive individual who is simply just trying to tune out from painful things. The problem is, by doing so, it's a big drain on the energy. So, I'm still recovering from it. And all those different environments and all those different personalities and looking back at the whole thing, most of the trip was traveling on Greyhound. Listening for signs of life, human life. Up ahead, I go and see birds. But see, sometimes you might hear stuff. And the interesting thing about recording, I'm gonna have to go back and listen, listen to those recordings with Jared in Las Vegas, because you can't film in the casino. But does it say you can't audio record a podcast? I'm curious to hear if there are some odd sounds other than just ping, ping, pong, 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 gambling sounds. <laughs> but I'm sure that's going to be interesting as well. But yeah, we recorded a number of podcasts. And I was just thinking, like, who does that? I was saying to Jared, because I just, I think like this. You know, it's like, do you think anybody else is doing what we're doing in this time-space reality? Recording a podcast about... The real reality, if you will, going from topic to topic. You could put it in the box of conspiratorial or other, but for the most part, a lot of people don't talk about things like that in public. You know, they, they look at what they look at privately on, on YouTube. They comment with anonymous names. They are who they say they are. It's an anonymous culture, but, you know, talk about a situation where there's two or more gathering. We're driving down the strip in Las Vegas. And talking about things from a larger picture picture perspective. Not, hey, you know, what strip club are we going to go to? Or we're gonna, where are we going to get some steak? Where are we going to go entertain ourselves? It was more, let's just drive up and down the strip. But also talk about these really interesting topics. As Jared and I met for the first time. He was a Facebook contact for five years. But to me, that means something. When someone's been around or has been following the content for more than a year or two, and then a few years pass, and you're having a slice of pizza together, or, or a cup of coffee, or a beer, or, or sometimes you may not even know that other person. But like Ethan sat down, we started talking about stuff. Before I know it, we recorded a long podcast. Audio was horrible, that's why it hasn't been uploaded. But it's like, who else but somebody like me? is going to do something like record a podcast with a total stranger at a McDonald's in San Diego. And to consider that, not only to get to the creator to meet somebody like that in a bad situation, but, but a sign of synchronicity. And to talk to you guys about that on YouTube. Like literally, there was no party party, nightclub. There's barely a welcome mat where I went. And I'm going to move beyond discussing that. Because I understand it's beyond the empathy level of a lot of people. Uh, to be called what I was called. And some people will just assume I'm making things like that up for some reason, which is a really big insult. But each his own. Uh, each his own. It's, it's pretty amazing that I can't even talk to you guys about what happened, how crazy that is. How it's like, you like the off-grid stuff, and, and you like walking in the park, but the second I bring up the fact that some lady called me a child immigrant, looking like a child immigrant, because she was a self-hating Afghan. And you're like, what? Oh shit, dude, Alex, don't, don't even fucking, I, what, what? We don't understand what you're talking about. You don't understand what I'm talking about? Traveling across the nation and being disrespected and the sun not even understand the severity of the insult. I mean, this is not a good time for America. This is not a very empathetic America. And that's why I'm here. But I left with a willingness to see life outside this matrix. And uh, I was reminded that I am more a suspect 
out there at a Greyhound depot with a with a piece of luggage. Heaven forbid I leave it unattended. Um, that I am here. This is my home. There are people that want to infect me, though, in the meantime, distract me, and send appropriate, very inappropriate emails, along with asking me to not share what's in those emails with the audience. And I'm just here to remind you, none of you, whether you donate or not, have the right to take me off my path. Okay. No one has the right at any time, at any place, to take me off my path. Okay. It would be advised to not donate to my work if you're motivated by reasons other than helping me reach more people. Then it would be advised to stay away from my content and leave me alone. But yeah, um, inappropriate emails are out of the question. Well, I've had enough walking. I'm going to start walking down. And But I need this. I need to shake myself up. I need to get out of my element. So, there's been a lot of different stages to my journey. Off-grid has been one of them. But easing into the shoes that I'm in, if you will. Or what I do is make video. I talk about controversial things. And... Uh, and I'm able to get by off of less money than what most people need in the city. <coughs> when I travel back into these environments, I'm reminded of what I've uh, worked so hard to get away from. Doesn't mean things aren't uh, challenging here. I went to a Walmart yesterday and the lady was looking at me a little too closely again when I'm checking out. I'm just disappointed that we live in this reality where people are just considered suspects over trivial things, and in certain situations, some people aren't considered suspects, you know, and I'm just tired of life like this, it's, uh, it's pretty lonely, but it's better to be lonely in the country than lonely in a uh, toxic urban environment, <coughs> you, you also have these people that think that they are being gang stalked, that they're targeted individuals, <coughs> and I don't think they really know what targeting is, if they're going to factor out supernatural influences <coughs> and pin it all on the government. And I'm sick for my travels. So that's why I'm, I'm forcing myself to walk, <coughs> to be under the sunlight. I have some vitamin C, you know, but just staying inside throughout the day because it's cold, which it is. Um, I do have a, a sweatshirt and something else that I'll be picking up on the side of the uh, road, so to speak. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have some tire marks right here. Here we can see the other mountain pass across from us. 